Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Thriving Talk. This is another Dad's in edition in which me, Tim, gets the chance to ask my dad, Tinko Thompson, questions. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. I was actually, I was thinking <coughs> that uh, Thriving Talk podcast, this is the 40th episode. Yep. Um, yeah, of, of, of course, all the uh, uh, podcast platforms we can send audio. But I was thinking that uh, on YouTube we should do video. What do you think we about could, that? We could, we could. Yeah, so let's figure out that. Yeah. Yeah, we need to. Maybe in a couple of episodes we'll be. Yeah, able let to. me see how we can do that. And uh, okay, otherwise doing good. Yeah, just right. just uh, as we were beginning, I was just thinking. Yeah. Yeah. A quick reminder to all our listeners: Thriving Talk is available on many major platforms like iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, and more. So. Today, for our episode, so the, for the past two episodes, we've been talking about the ministry trip you went on and two countries you went to, which is Cameroon and Uganda. So today we're going to talk about the last country you went to, which was Congo. So how did Congo come up? Why, wh- why did you decide to go there? Yeah, you're right. Uh we have done one for Cameroon and uh, Uganda, the previous, so this is for Congo. And I feel like it's been a long time since I went to Congo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <coughs> and, that uh, that was the last And one, I'm right? thinking of my next trip right now. So, <laughs> oh, so yeah. anyway, uh, yeah, so we went to Democratic Republic of Congo. And uh, your question is, how did I go there? Yeah, we had some contacts and uh, we got some... Uh, one one pastor's contact over there in Bunia, so we wanted to go and see and uh, see how we can start the ministry there or how we can be of any help for the people over there. So that was the uh, reason why we decided to go to Congo and we ended up going to Congo. Yep. Okay. So, like, what did you do there? What were some of the main things you did there? Yeah, before I talk about what did we do there or how we reached there, I just want to take a few moments to talk about the fact that uh, um, going to Congo uh, was <laughs> a very interesting experience. <clears throat> okay. Um, just if somebody wants to go who's listening, who may be listening to our podcast, I just want to say that um, I think I mentioned it last time. For Cameroon, uh, from US, you had to apply for a visa and you need a letter and there are different things. Same applies for Congo too. Um, you need to send your passport to Washington DC and uh, you get the visa right from there. Um, out of all these countries, it's not the easiest one for some reason. It's, it's, uh, it's one of the, I won't say the toughest one, but still uh, you felt like, you know, I say Uganda was the easiest one, but then so, how we went is an interesting story. So, we <laughs> took a MAF flight from uh, Kampala <coughs> uh, to uh, a place called as, uh, Arua in Uganda, which is a border mm, city. Um, and then, uh, so that's a MAF, I don't know if any people know this. It's a, I, I was very impressed with that uh, whole uh, concept of MAF. It's a Mission Aviation Fellowship. So it's in different countries. So primarily they do rescue, they have planes, they take people from one place to another because there is no other commercial planes to go. Um, the place where we're going from like from Kampala to Bunia, uh, if you go on a bus or some other road, it takes eight, 10 hours. That's what I was told and it will be very tough journey. So these planes, they take you. So um, I think uh, we went from uh, Kampala to uh, I think Goma or Gulu, yeah, uh, yeah, one place over there, and then from there we went to uh, Arua. Um, so what happens is uh, uh, we get on this plane, and it's a small plane, maybe okay. 14, 15, 16 seater, I guess. So I was sitting in the front, almost just behind the pilot, and then. Okay. Uh, <coughs> this pilot gives instructions and uh, he asks, is there anybody, any pastors here who would like to pray? So we, 
everybody looked at me and uh, he asked me would you like to pray i said yeah why not so that was my first uh, experience in my life where i got a chance to pray before a plane before takes a off plane, yeah. yeah so and then we reached there and then uh, they had made the arrangements so that um, we got on a taxi car and uh, we reached the border and uh, so i will come back to the what happened at the border but uh, after from the border once we clear the immigration everything and get entry into congo we take another taxi and go to the airport or airfield i should not call it as airport and uh, from there we um, take another maf like the initial one was maf uganda now we take a maf congo plane to uh, bunia so okay. what happened is very interesting some of the things i want to tell you so while we were crossing the border at least if i'm not wrong by by the time we crossed bunia five times vaccination certificates and everything was checked five times five times at least yes so you cross one and they ask you everything yellow fever covid like all those stuff and then um in the immigration um for some reason uh we were like um, made to stand there for a long time uh because they do lot of checks i think uh, congo has a lot of resources um and uh, maybe in the past i don't know much about it people may have done something so we had all the letters but finally um i realized that somebody had to call and um, finally they let us go um so we came out uh, from there and uh, we went there so that process took a long time but while we were coming the plane was waiting for us and one more incident which i even not forget is uh, you know very normally innocently i um was trying to capture the memory of being in that airport in uh, aru and uh, yeah i actually just take a picture and they caught me for taking that picture they had me delete that picture why uh because for some reason they don't want you to take picture so you just took a picture of like airport oh. just outside and oh. they didn't and they they were having some problem with that but anyway it's okay and that's not the first time i experienced it not i experienced it for the first time but somebody was traveling with me had a kind of similar experience in cameroon where when they went to take the covid test they wanted to take the picture of um, something and they were not happy about that so if you're traveling uh, be very careful because sometimes they can make your life very difficult just for taking an innocent picture you know innocently taking a picture <laughs> So anyway we got on the plane once as soon as we got on the plane the pilot basically told you can take any picture you can use your phone whatever no problem so and the beautiful view you know these mf when you go, fly on these planes they fly about 5000 to 6000 feet above you know it's not like you know other planes so you get a very good view of what is happening so greenery and all those stuff so it's a uh, very pleasant uh, thing and then um we reached bunia and uh, we were received by i think 20 to 30 people at least uh. there were a lot of people who came to receive us so that was a very uh, beautiful reception we got there and uh, um so that's how we started our journey uh, or our stay in bunia uh, so so there were some interesting things but once we were in everything was good okay mhm mm so I, I you told about your whole experience entering there but now you Oh can, yeah, yeah, what are the moments? Okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I because I thought that that is yeah, important. Yeah, that, that's really good to talk yeah. about that. Yeah. So, um so what are my favorite moments? Uh, there are many many things which are there. I think out of these three countries, I think I have um more all three countries had different experience. I'm not trying to say Congo was So your favorite memories are kind of I I would say there were many memories which stands out okay number 1 So uh, we went there um we found that there were people okay we got a good place to stay and then it was kind of a house and uh, we were staying there uh, you know and then there were people outside all the time um, taking care of us So like security security right? people security yes there were cars which were there and everywhere we want to go um then um uh, okay let me start uh from, from the beginning so yeah. the next day we went uh, to a meeting um and uh, in in the church of the pastor who was hosting us 
um, I think there were 500 people um, in the church uh, or in that meeting. Uh, oh, that was amazing. Um, and, and they were all very vibrant people. Um, so the other thing was uh, uh, we went to visit some hospitals but also some universities. And I got a chance to speak in a university where they were close to 500 peop- students, pharmacy students and all. Okay, okay. Uh, so like a college, basically? It's a, yeah, it's a university, yeah. actually. Yeah, that was amazing. Um, and uh, the d- amazing in the sense, like, that's probably the first time I'm talking, and I have some videos of that, you know, how they are excited and all those stuff. I think you might have seen some. Yeah. Some yeah, some all the kids you yeah. know, making noise and all. So anyway, um, after that, um, we had two days pastors meeting, which was well attended. Hundreds of pastors attending that. Uh, we had meetings with different different people. Sunday also we went to different churches. We had meetings with uh, our potential volunteers. Um, Sunday service, it was Easter Sunday. Again, overflow crowd. People were sitting outside in the, in the tent along uh, you know, the church. Okay. Got a chance to speak there. It was very blessed. Um, and then um, we, we had a very, very fruitful time. Um, uh, by the way, we also had a brother who was cooking for us, mainly he was a head cook, he was a very chef. good chef. Uh, good. Yeah, he, he, was, he was really good, so we, we were eating very well. <laughs> <laughs> um, of course, we had the problem with electricity and all those stuff, but uh, um, other than that, we were doing uh, perfectly fine, right? Uh, then the biggest um, thing, I have two more things I want to tell about Congo. Uh, one is the fact that we went to see some refugee camps and uh, we also saw a lot of kids on the streets. So they come from war zones or where they cannot stay, they leave that place. So a lot of kids are on the streets here and they sleep on the street, they eat and drink on the street. That was a heartbreaking uh, moment uh, to see them. So if you go and stand outside, they will gather around you expecting something from you. So that so they like they're expecting you to give something? Yeah, to eat or money or something. Um, and parents also let them go because they don't have anything. So the refugee camp, I'm not talking about like uh, 50, 100 camps. It's like thousands of camp, you know, tents where people are living. So that was a very, very challenging thing to see. Um, and uh, just to be thankful for everything you have. Um, and then, uh, so that was a key, key moment in the sense like uh, uh, these children, um, they have no hope and uh, I, I pray that something can be done for them. Um, so are, that are you guys, are, is your mm-hmm. ministry trying to do something? Yeah, otherwise they will end up with drugs and you know they may end up with in a very bad state, so we want yeah. to do something for them. Anyway, um, then the other moment is we got a chance to meet with the governor of okay. that place. Of like he, the city. He's a, he's a lieutenant general in the army too. So we were, um, we got an appointment. That was something special uh, when I think about it because we were able to go there, meet with him, talk to him about what we want to do and all those things. So that was a... <coughs> really. Is he is he like a Christian or like a believer? I don't think so, <coughs> but he was very uh, receptive about what we were saying. He has a lot of problems to deal with in the place, um, the rebel groups and all other things. But um, he was he was uh, he took the time to receive us, talk to us, and the um, <coughs> the thing came in the local government run channel, and then also. Um, the four radio stations also covered um, our meetings, or not meetings, but about the fact that we are there to start something there. So that was also a very unique uh, experience. So yeah, um, I, I think uh, the worship experience over there was very different than what we could ever imagine here. Okay. And also when you preach, the receptivity is so much high, you know. Um, there was one moment, I don't know which meeting was it, pretty much I said something in my introduction and people were all 
basically standing stood up. stood up and i was confused what to do and i asked <laughs> the translator what happened did i say anything wrong he said no they are all happy and excited about what you said then i had to ask them to sit down <laughs> So no very very much you feel very like welcome. yeah when you're preaching right you feel like they are pulling things out of you like you know I I, I don't know I I felt very very good about um, <clears throat> that experience uh, of speaking to them okay. um other than that um I think the pastors conference was also excellent uh, in many ways we also got a chance to meet with um, the bishop of ECC it's a one of the biggest church churches or organizations there um twice actually and uh, pray with him and that was also a good thing um the other memory i think is uh, had a chance to meet with 89 year old bishop of um acc church i guess that's the name of the church um he was a father of uh, the pastor was hosting us so it was good to see him healthy and uh, you know So yeah, a lot of uh, things to be said about the stay over there. So, what do you notice about like the people and the land or the culture there? Um anything. Yeah, the the people out. are very nice, but also a lot of problems there, right? Uh, you know. So, I will tell you that uh, not too far away from we were staying, there is you cannot go there because of the war, ch- yeah. war and challenges. I think when we were there on that Friday uh, I heard that uh, in a village there was an attack which is t- maybe 10 12 kilometers that's what I heard or I understood from where we were and uh, people were killed oh um <clears throat> so yeah so when you look at that aspect it's very sad I ho- I pray that situations will change and uh, such a beautiful country a um, lot of natural resources a lot of gold mines you yeah, know gold Yeah, a lot of gold is there and all those things are there. I I I just pray that nobody will exploit them rather uh, the people will um you know be blessed by the Lord so yeah. that they can live in peace. Did you guys hear like like a c- attack because it isn't that far away? No, we c- No, we were in a safe place, but of course, um there is there is always this uh the tension right but then yeah. when you meet people i saw some pastors who had to leave their place and come and stay in refugee camps for months and months because the place they were staying they can't stay they can't stay there so that's another thing so so i i just uh, pray that uh, god will change the situation of that nation and bring peace and uh, security for people otherwise i found people were very nice uh, very good at least the uh, once i have interacting young a lot of youngsters um i had a contact even now some of them text me and you know we are in connect contact um so they they very nice uh, very interested uh we i saw some people uh, some young people um very sincere in prayer sincere in their spiritual lot of dependency upon god because the situation is such that they cannot be in a false sense of security over there anything can happen any any time um so i think when we when we travel and when we meet people who have gone through those situations i think they give you a perspective which you cannot get otherwise um for example i when i was in uganda i was talking to someone and uh, that person was saying we don't want to go back to the old days because they also had a very tragic oh. history where they they went through a lot of challenging times so um I, yeah i think it's very bad whatever is happening um in many places by the way but yeah otherwise uh, people were very nice um i think um i i also got a dress i don't know when when i will wear that maybe i'll look for an occasion a traditional dress which was uh, given to yeah given by the pastor's wife so it was it was, it was nice gesture um what else um Yeah, I I think um, there was a lot of moments uh which were I I would say yeah the people uh very nice. Another thing I experienced so was uh, big big churches. Uh-huh. Uh we went to a youth meeting in a church. Uh, that church had about I think 4000 members. Okay. They're building a new build, you know, building um so very very good uh, 
experience there too. Okay. So do you have any final things to add or anything else you want to say? Um I I think I shared the highlights. Um we are going to start with our tri program and other things there. Too, okay. Yeah, we are also looking at uh, there was a hospital where we visited they need a well water okay. source. So you guys trying to build? Yeah, we are trying to see if we can help them with that. Of course, Bibles are needed over there. Um, in fact, when we were coming back, they were asking, some people were asking us for Bibles. We didn't have any Bibles to give them. Because already in the other... Yeah, the place, they are, here also we took some Bibles, but we gave it away. Um, I got a chance to even meet some UN peacekeeping forces, you know. Uh, met a very nice left-hand colonel from Bangladesh. Exchange numbers, he asked me when, uh, to contact him when I go to Bangladesh. Uh, no, so very, very good experience, actually. Um, I think, uh, yeah, I would, I would request uh, my listeners to remember these places in your prayers because, um, yeah, we, we, don't, we cannot imagine what uh, type of experience these people are having yeah. um, no security no um, when I say security means that there are people who feel secure but things could change and there is there are problems so uh, so but uh, there are a lot of struggles even the government wants to do a lot of good things but they are also struggling to get that things in place so yeah remember the many your prayers and uh, if anybody is interested in uh, knowing more, I'm always feel uh, feel free to contact, and I will be more than willing to talk more in detail about uh, what I saw and what I experienced over there. But otherwise, I think uh, it has been a it has been a great experience. I think out of all the countries I've gone so far, I think Myanmar stands out and the Congo stands out for some some particular reason, especially. Um, Congo for the fact that so many children are on the streets and I think I showed you a picture one you know, two small kids are standing and after seeing in one of the picture I see them you know pleading with their hands folded so that's a very touching thing yeah that's uh, that's what I would say all right so thank you for sharing and to all our listeners, my dad, in these past three episodes, talked about his whole journey and where he went. And I hope this inspires you. And I hope everyone prays for these countries because we're all working together. And some some of these countries, they're going through hard times. So I hope all our viewers pray for these people. Um, uh, so th- to all our listeners, um, thank you for listening to this episode. Um, in the coming weeks, we will be coming back with the more um, editions of Thriving Talk, and I'll be asking more questions. As we said in the beginning, this episode is available on many platforms. Do not forget to follow or subscribe to the Thriving Talk podcast on your favorite platform as they get released. Um, also remember that my dad has a newsletter that goes out every other week. Um, I don't think it goes out this week. No, last week uh, I had written about something from Uganda. Prior to that, I wrote about Congo, sorry, Cameroon, and uh, next edition, which will come next week, I will have something from some unique story which I didn't even share here from uh, Congo. So, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. And, uh, yeah, we are are trying to do some things in these places to help um, if anyone is interested. Um, please Contact. let us let me know. I will I can I can share more details and information about it. All right. So um so yeah, stay tuned and if you want to connect and know more about, you can a- also contact my dad. Um so th- thank you everyone for listening and uh, we'll be com- we'll be back soon. But until then, remember uh, that we have to pray and for these places and um we have to stay persistent in our prayer and god bless you all thank you god bless you all